And don't forget the motor, but I'll leave this here because it's full. Wait, let's move back a couple of days and I'll show you how to design it. If you don't want to learn about the design, you want to go straight to the drilling, the tapping and the grinding, I've linked the time code below. Feel free to skip ahead. Making a 3D design is way easier than it may seem. All you need is a computer, CAD software, some time to learn the software and a good supply of coffee. For most of the projects that I built, I first make a 3D design in Fusion 360. On small projects, I keep it really simple and on more complex or precise projects, I design it up to the last detail. I want this belt grinder to be a solid build, very well functioning machine, so I'm going full details here. A bit of research told me that for steel you want the belt speed between 20 and 30 meters per second, for plastic and other heat sensitive materials it's obviously a bit lower. A quick calculation told me that a 3000 rpm motor with a 5 or 6 inch driving wheel would be the way to go to reach the higher speeds. Combining that with the motor on a VFD also gives me the lower speeds. As you can see, I designed this all from flat sheet. That makes it possible to get the parts cut out by a laser cutter, a plasma cutter or a water jet. This may seem like a whole different world, but it's fairly easy. Export all the parts as a step file and look for a laser cutting service online. There are more and more online services that have a tool where you can upload your files and directly see the price. Even though I do have a lathe, I ordered the wheels online as well. With the speeds the grinder is getting, the wheels need to be very precise. And that's not something I have the tools or skills for at the moment. When you have ordered all the parts, sit back, relax and wait till you can start building. So this is everything I need for the belt grinder. It's a lot of stuff. I need some space. So let's get this all out of my desk and start with the sheet metal. See how that turned out. Let's move these ones here to keep the sponsor happy. Check these out by the way. These are the wheels. So cool. But they're for later. This one. This is the main body of the machine. Sweet. It's so cool when you design something and then you have it in your hands. These are all the parts I need, but I don't need all of them yet. I'm going to start with actually the base of the machine, see if that all fits. I'm going to do a quick fit up before I'm going to paint it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thread all the holes and countersink the holes that need to be countersinked. That way now it's all easy, it's flat and I can do it a lot easier than when it's all welded up or even when it's painted. So this one needs some thread, this one does these ones. Seems fine. Let's do this. I think it's when I have the bit too far in the chuck and it gets loose and with the bit you actually push the chuck off. Also when you're tapping the holes like this or you're working on the lathe or you're drilling a hole in metal, having a good cutting fluid can make all the difference. It, it lubricates the process, the drill bit or the tap and that makes it go a lot smoother. With the tap it often prevents it from breaking. so. That's a nice win. And yeah, it saves your drill bit or your tap, so it just goes a lot longer. These are the holes for the wheels. On these, it's even more important that they're straight, otherwise, the wheels are gonna be not straight and the belt's gonna track off. So that's not what we want. Also here I'm just doing the first few windings so I can do everything else easier by hand. Bam! So I have the holes drilled, I have countersinks, I have the threads, so quick then to see if it goes on the motor. This is how it should go. Check it out, pretty sweet. It's a rock solid. During the design I was thinking to actually make it 6mm instead of 8mm steel to save some money or some weight. 
but it didn't save any money and it's rock solid with 8mm so I'm happy. Shall we try the wheel? It does, shouldn't be on here yet but just for trying it. It's, it's gonna look good. So to get a bit of a feeling of how it's gonna be, the base, this is where the front wheels come and this comes over here sliding in and out and then this plate comes on the back to support this thing. So the next step I need to do is I might need to make the supporting pieces that go in between here and I'm going to use this to make it. It does get very messy though, but nothing we cannot clean up. Just need to thread the holes and then we're good to go. These go on here. And let's start with the middle one. I have to take everything apart later anyway to paint it, so right now I'm just going for the dry fit and doing mounting them with two screws. That this fits in here and I doubt it will right now. But it will later. I need a little bit more spacing in this direction. So this first dry test seems to be a success. So next step would be to weld up the base and weld up the handle mechanism for the spanner. And then I can move on. So I just tacked it in place so it would stay there when I flipped it over. And now I can weld it here in the little squares, grind it flat and you can see nothing about it because it's on the bottom. This is the base all done. I need to do some grinding on it when it's cooled down. But in the meantime I can do the other parts. And these parts are going to be the piece between the base and the actual grinding machine. So same thing, I have a puzzle, but it needs to fit on here. So I'm going to put it on the, fit it together like this. And then already mount it here, that way it must fit. Stuff like this happens. Let's fix it. So while the new thing for the tensioner is drying, I'm going to take this apart so I can give it its first coat of paint. This handle has two functions. It's for the tracking wheel and it's both the tensioner of the machine as well as the tracking and the tracking wheel. And to do that, the tracking wheel has to come here and has to be able to move a bit like this and like this. So I'm gonna make a block from aluminum that fits in here where I can screw this onto. Then on this back side, there's a knob where you can adjust the tilt of the tracking wheel. And like I showed before, if you have the first couple of rounds on the drill press, then it's straight. 
and you can finish it by hand really easily. Get nice straight tapped holes. It's a little bit more work than just with the hand drill, but it saves the hassle. So all the parts are ready. I can now mount the tracking wheel on the block and the block on the arm. So let's see. I don't want it to come loose, so I'm applying a lock tight. So there it is. With this knob, as you can see, when I turn it, the wheel moves like this. When I turn it back, that way you can align the belt on the wheel. So you move it like this, the belt goes this way. When you move it like that, the belt goes the other way, if I'm correct. And then this is the hinging point for the tension. So this is basically done. I'll paint it later, but I first want to see if everything works out this way. So, sweet. The blocks that I made for on the plate were a bit off, so I decided to make some new ones. I had material over, so why not? So that's that. I also wired up the VFD and the motor, and it works nice. I won't go into detail on how to wire it in this video, because it's all depending on your situation, your motor, your VFD, and your power. So I have some general info about it on my blog post, which I will link below. But for now, I think the sheet metal is dry, so I can mount it back onto here. Let's get it. Put some Loctite in all the holes so the screws won't loosen themselves from the vibrations. Which I'm sure there will be. That looks good. Power. <laughs> Breaking goes super quick. Let's mount the other stuff and then try it with the belt. I think that's gonna be even better. First up, the tensioner. What's really cool is that I have this little plunger thingy. So the idea is that when the spring is on tension, it's here, and then when you want to take the tension off the belt, you pull it forward, the plunger locks, and you have two and three to put the belt. And when you want to put tension on the belt again, you just pull the plunger and bam, it goes back. But for that to work, I need a spring. So let's mount it. But we're missing something, the grinding wheels. So I have this plate that comes in the front over here, where the two driving wheels will be mounted on. And this plate will be mounted on this piece of aluminum bar. It slides in here, front and back, so you can adjust it, adjust it for your belt. And you can tilt it, so you can slide it front and back whenever you want. So, let's cut this up and put it on there. I do still have to fix the sliding of this beam. It's still a little bit too thick, so I have to take a little bit more off, probably with the angle grinder, but I want to try it first. So let's do that. First try. I think the belt tension is way too little right now, but maybe I should pull it out a bit. Check it out. It works. Due to the fact that I had to re-weld this, the holes that I made were not aligned properly and this whole thing was on an angle like this, making the tracking wheel basically pointless. But now it works. Let's check it out. This is slow. I want to see sparks. Let's do this. So it works, but I still need to do some tweaking on it. That's why I took some of the parts off. And the problem I had was that this is completely stuck in here. I was hoping that with the tolerances of these, this one would slide just in. So it would be a nice snug fit. 
and it is really snug, but I cannot move it anymore. So I've ordered these shim rings. They are 0.2 millimeters. I'm going to put them in here and hopefully this will give me just enough space so I can move this. Let's take it apart. Still too much. Luckily, I have more. So I stack two of the shims on top of each other, giving me 0.4 millimeters extra. And now it's perfect. If I loosen this, I can move it, but there's no play. And then when I want it in position, rock solid. So that's really nice. I have the same below here with this piece for the work table. So that needs to come on here. And that is this piece of metal. So I'm gonna bolt this onto here. And then I have my work table. So I need to drill two holes, countersink them so I can bolt it on. And now I have this all together, it's time for the stand. If you want to make an awesome grinder like this yourself, check out my website. I have a full set of build plans available that includes the part list with everything you need to buy, the 3D model of the whole grinder, as well as the, as the cutting files for the sheet metal. So you can just get them laser cut or plasma cut somewhere and you just have to assemble it basically with a little bit of welding and all the other things that I showed in the video. Getting the plan saves you a lot of troubleshooting, making your own design and yeah, you know what you're getting. Also. When you buy a plan from me, it helps me to make the next project, so we're both winning. If you like this build, you'll probably like this video over here as well. Hit that subscribe button before you leave, and don't forget, dare to experiment and have fun creating.